Okay. In module 41, this is the module where we will start, um, <clears throat> excuse me, solving equations of logarithmics or exponentials. Okay, so for in this module, I think most of the equations are concentrating on logarithmic equations. And so in order to solve logarithmic equations, we need to understand that, <clears throat> excuse me, logarithms and exponentials are inverses of one another, which means they do cancel each other out when one operator has been operated on the other. So for instance, if you have an exponential here, you want to get rid of the exponential, you apply the logarithm with the same base. Then the log with base e and the exponential with base e will cancel each other out, leaving you with just c. And it works in the reverse order as well. If you have a logarithm, right, with base e and apply the exponential base e, again, those two will cancel each other out, leaving you with just c. And it doesn't matter what the base is. If you have an exponential base 10, apply a logarithm base 10, they will cancel each other out, leaving you with just c. If you have a logarithm with base 10, apply an exponential with base 10, they will cancel each other out, leaving you with just c. If you have a log, uh, I mean exponential with base b, apply a logarithm with base b, and they will cancel each other out. If you have a log with base b, apply an exponential with base b, and they will cancel each other out, okay? So for this particular problem, it says solve an equation of the form log some base, some argument equal to something. And so this is the example that they've given me here. Now notice that my base is 10. So what I've done is I've applied the exponential base 10 to both sides. So then this becomes the exponent of my exponential base, and this becomes the exponent of my exponential base. Now remember, the exponential base 10 and the logarithmic base 10 will cancel each other out, leaving me with just x on the left-hand side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And 10 cubed is 1,000, okay? Now there is another way to do it. I just find applying the inverse the easiest way to explain how to do the problems. But the other way to do it is to change this into exponential form using the definition of a logarithm. And so 10 is my base, and then my exponent will be three, and the argument will be what goes on the other side. And now x is already isolated, so you just need to calculate what 10 cubed is, and you get 1,000. Now in this particular problem, this side might have been a little bit shorter. However, this is more of a general way to solve the problem so that you can apply this method to like almost any of the logarithm equations, okay? Now, here we have, uh, before we continue on with the equations, this one says use the properties of the logarithms to evaluate some expressions. So the first problem we have here is 2 log 12, 2 plus log 12, 3. So the first thing we did was just basically try to combine it into one log. So when we move that over, it becomes um, 2 squared. And then because it's a plus, we can multiply the arguments. So we end up with this, log 12 of 2 squared times 3, which is 4 times 3, which just gives you 12. And we know that if you have a base 12 here and a base 12 there, they're going to cancel each other out, and you're left with the exponent. The exponent happens to be an imaginary 1. So there it is, not an imaginary, an invisible one. Here, this is the expression that was given. So we know to combine this, we use a subtraction, means they're gonna divide. So the first argument over the second argument, and if I use my power rules, you do two take away 11, you get negative nine, and this log with base E and that exponential with base E will cancel each other out, leaving you with just the negative nine. So we're still using that concept of the inverses, right? That logs with one base and exponentials with the same base will undo each other, okay? So for this problem here, this is what we were given, and they want us to solve it. Now, as long as you have just one log on one side or one log on one side and one log on the other side, you can apply the inverse, which is the exponentials, okay? 
So here I'm gonna apply the exponential, but with base two. So we do two raised to the left-hand side, two raised to the right-hand side. These will undo each other, leaving us with three X minus three on the left, and two to the fourth is just 16 on the right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Add three to both sides, you get three X over 19. Divide by three on both sides, and you get X equals 19 over three. Now the only thing we have to do is make sure that our solutions keep our arguments positive. Remember, when it comes to uh, logarithms, your bases and your arguments must be positive. My base is two. That is always going to be positive, so that's good. I just need to make sure that this x value keeps my argument positive, and it does. If I do three, times 19 over 3, I'll get 19. And then if I subtract 3, I'll get 16. So my argument will stay positive. It'll be a positive 16. So this is, in fact, a solution. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. It's problem type 2. So the only thing different from this problem and the previous problem is that this logarithmic expression on the left-hand side is not by itself. It's got an extra term plus eight over here. I cannot apply the, um, the inverse, which is the exponential base, to both sides until the logarithmic part is by itself. So we minus eight on both sides and we end up with the log base five of negative x equal to two. Now that I have my logarithmic expression isolated on this side, I can apply the exponential base. So the base here is five, which means I'm gonna do five raised to the left-hand side and five raised to the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, the exponential will cancel out the logarithm and I'll end up with just the argument negative four X. On the right-hand side, five squared is merely 25. If I divide both sides by negative four, I end up with negative 25 over four. Again, we must verify that this answer is going to keep our arguments and our base positive. Five is positive, that is good to go. Oh. If I plug in this negative fraction here, I'm gonna have a negative times a negative, which will be positive. So this is a solution, and it's perfectly fine to type that in there. So the next problem is solving a multi-step, but we have the same issue here. The logarithmic expression, it happens to be a natural logarithmic expression, but the logarithmic expression is not alone. So we have to get rid of this plus four. To do that, we have to minus four on both sides, which does eliminate the four on the left-hand side, but now we have three on the right-hand side. Now remember, for a natural logarithm, the base is e. So in order to cancel out a logarithmic with base e, I need to apply the exponential base e. So I have e raised to the left-hand side, e raised to the right-hand side, and then these two would cancel each other out, leaving me with just the argument x plus one equal to e cubed. Now in order to isolate x, we have the minus one on both sides, so we end up with x by itself and e cubed minus one. Never, ever, ever round your answers until you are completely have your X isolated, okay? Um, so notice how it says only round the final answer. It might also say something like do not round intermittent, intermittent steps, which means don't go cubing the E here and then subtracting the one. Wait until the X is completely isolated, then type whatever your final expression is into the calculator. And that's where I get 19.09. I typed in E raised to the third power, get down, minus one. And we ended up with this expression, but rounded to the nearest hundredth meant that the five was gonna change the eight to a nine. And then remember to make sure that this will keep your argument positive. The base here is E, which is always positive. It's 2.78, blah, 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 right? But will it make this positive? Sure, 19.09 plus one is 20.09, but it is positive. So this answer is good. Now here we have another type. 
Now notice that this one has logs on both sides. However, the problem is, is that you also have a term that doesn't have a log in it. So you need to get all of the logs on one side when that happens. If you have a single term in your equation that does not have a log, then you need to get all the logs to one side. So what we've done here is we've subtracted this log term to the other side so that you'll have all the log terms on one side and the non-log term, the constant, on the other side. So what I end up with here is the one all by itself on the right and then this logarithmic expression subtracted this logarithmic expression, which is what I have here. But you can combine these into one log. Using the subtraction means I will have to take this argument divided by that argument. So I have combined them into one log there. Once you have that, you can apply the exponential inverse. So the base here is five, which means I'm gonna have five raised to the left-hand side and five raised to the right-hand side. Here they cancel, leaving me with x plus eight over x plus four, and five to the power one is just five. This resulting equation does have a fraction. How do we get rid of fractions? We multiply by the common denominator on both sides. Common denominator here is x plus four, so I multiply that on the left, multiply that on the right, on the left, it cancels, leaving me with x plus 8. On the right, I have to distribute that 5, which gives me, gives me with 5x plus 20. Then I have to subtract x on both sides, <clears throat> excuse me, resulting in the equation 8 equal to 4x plus 20, minus 20 on both sides, I'm left with negative 12 equals 4x, and divide by 4 on both sides, I'm left with negative three equals x. We just have to make sure that that negative three doesn't make the arguments, um, or that keeps the arguments positive. So the bases are five, those will always be positive. But if I plug in a negative three here, I end up getting positive five, which is good. If I plug in a negative three here, I get positive one, which is also good. So negative three does work out as a solution. Now, Last example in this module. So here we have logs on both sides, but remember in order for me to apply the exponential inverse, I have to have single logs on each side, okay? And there's no extra terms that don't have a log. So really I only need to combine these two into one log and then I'll have exactly what I need. A single log on one side and a single log on the other side with no extra constant terms. So here, subtraction means I'm going to use division. So this is gonna become log of x minus six over two equal to log x. What is the base here? The base is 10 when there's no base given, right? So I'm gonna use 10 as my exponential base. So 10 raised to the left-hand side, 10 raised to the right-hand side, and Have fractions, multiply both sides by the common denominator. Common denominator here is two, so multiplied by two on both sides. Left-hand side, it cancels. Right-hand side, we end up with two x. Minus the x over to the right, so we end up with negative six equals x. Now, the only thing left to do is make sure that this x value doesn't make any of our arguments negative. But if I plug negative six into here and negative six negative six minus six is a negative 12. That is not going to work in this argument. There's really no reason to check the other argument because it has to work in both in order for me to say that it's a solution. But just looking at it, if you were to plug in negative six here, it would stay in negative six, which means again, this one wouldn't work either, okay? It doesn't need to not work in both in order for you to say this is not a solution. It only needs to be bad for one of these in order for this not to be a solution. So I really didn't need to verify whether this guy was gonna be okay or not because that one was already not okay. 
So this is not going to be a solution, but it's the only solution I found and it's bad. What that means is that I have to tell the computer there's no solution. I found one and it doesn't work, which means there are none to give.